Hey, I wanted to address some very commonly misunderstood uh, subjects when it comes to the music industry and specifically when it comes to copyrights and um, performance royalties and licensing. So we're going to take a look at how it might uh, work with a large name artist and a record company, publishing company, and try to clear some of this confusion up. All right, so if, if you look at the screen here, it's kind of laid out in two halves that mirror each other because the principles uh, that apply to both sides of the page are pretty much the same. So on the left side of the page we have the song and on the right side we have the sound recording. Uh, songs consist of the underlying melodies and uh, chord structure and the lyrics uh, while sound recordings are a musician's interpretation of that song. So they're completely two separate things. All right, that's really important to remember, and it's easy to forget that and put them together as one. All right, so on the left side, we have uh, the players. Well, let's back up a minute and look at the whole industry as a whole, okay? So we have songwriters that write the songs. We have recording artists uh, that record the songs, which nowadays are very often uh, the songwriter themselves. And we have record companies that uh, typically own the copyright to a sound recording. And we have publishing companies which typically own the copyright to the song itself. And uh, just like the songwriter is often the recording artist, the record company is often, often the publishing company as well. All right, now, it pretty much starts with the songwriter. The songwriter or songwriters will write a song and in they immediately own a copyright to that song as soon as they write the song down in some kind of tangible way on a napkin or 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 they record the song that maybe they just sing it in their phone you know those could technically be copyrights right there uh, and then if they have a, if they have a partnership with a publishing company in general they would transfer transfer the copyright of the song to the publishing company and the job of the publishing company is to go out and find uses for that song, find people that want to use that song, all right? And in order to use that song, people are going to need to pay a licensing fee, <laughs> uh, all right? So the publishing company is going to negotiate licensing fees and then split the profit with the songwriter pretty cool. All right, and on the other side of things, it works pretty much the same way. The recording artist, their job is to record a song. And as soon as they do that, they have the copyright to that song. And they sometimes share that with the producer. But usually they will transfer that copyright to a record company or record label. And the record label's job is to find people to buy that song. <laughs> All right, record companies uh, typically do more than that. They'll uh, help with the, well, actually, they'll front the money for the recordings. They'll help with the distribution of uh, physical products like CDs or um, records. And they also often help with touring and merch, et cetera, et cetera. All right, now, if we go back to the song side of things, let's talk about the actual licenses that are available for songs. All right, we've got different types of rights. The mechanical right is basically the right to affix a song to any kind of media that you're gonna sell, uh, like a CD or a record or an MP3. All right, and the publishing company generally issues this kind of license to rec uh, recording artists and record companies. All right, so let's say a songwriter writes a song. Uh, the publishing company, in theory, would register the copyright to that song. A recording artist decides they want to record a cover of that song. So they would be issued a mechanical right in order to sell that cover. Uh, and you know, record recording artists or record companies usually can negotiate with the publishing company on a licensing fee to pay for that. But there's also like a standard rate, 
and there's actually uh, several companies that uh, that help publishing companies with the negotiation and collection of mechanical rights and mechanical licenses. The big one is HarryFox.com. So, uh, me and you, as a as a recording artist, if we were going to do a cover song that we wanted to sell on iTunes, you can go to HarryFox.com, and uh, there's a I don't know. 60-75% chance that the song is going to be on HarryFox.com and you'll be able to get a uh, mechanical license right there just kind of automated online. Now publishing companies are going to list their catalogs of songs with HarryFox.com uh, so that they don't have to deal with um, talking to recording artists and record companies um, to issue all these mechanical licenses HarryFox.com can handle it for them. All right, so that makes it easy. Now there is also a synchronization right, um, and TV shows and movies, um, and in theory, videos, any kind of video, um, would will need to be issued a sync license in order to use a song in any kind of video or moving picture. Uh, now, just like uh, mechanical rights, uh, you, you, they need to pay a licensing fee for this, and there's no automated company such as Harry Fox, so um, the TV production company or the movie production company or whoever is in charge of the movie for that uh, production is going to need to negotiate uh, with the publishing, publishing company to get a sync license to use a song in their project. All right. Now, there's also the print right, and this uh, concerns like songbooks and, and s things where you actually physically write a song down in printed form and sell it. Uh, you need to deal with the publishing company directly for that. A grand right is the right to use a song in um, a Broadway show, for example. Um, I don't know much about that. But if you're going to make a Broadway show, you got to make sure you have a, uh, a grand license for the songs that you use. And then finally, we have performing rights. So anytime a song is performed in a public place, there needs to be a, uh, a license issued and a royalty collected. All right? So this could be either yourself or any other artists or musicians perform a song in a public place, a public venue, for example, or the song is played, uh, the song is played by way of a sound recording of that song in a public place, such as in a club or on a jukebox uh, or over the radio, uh, over the internet, streaming radio, for example. There's many different ways a song can be performed, uh, and in theory, a license is issued for the performance of that song and a royalty is collected and distributed to the publishing company and the songwriter. All right, the publishing company and the songwriter are going to split the performance rights, the performing, uh, excuse me, the performance royalties uh, for the performance of their song 50-50. Or the publishing companies, if there's multiple, will split those royalties half of the royalties, and the songwriters, if there's multiple, will split the songwriter half of the song performance royalties. This is where it gets pretty confusing because you can split up that pie many, many different ways. Now it would be unrealistic for publishers themselves as well as songwriters themselves to have to issue licenses every time in advance someone wanted to perform a song and then try to invoice and collect payment uh, for the use of that performance of that song. Um, so there's companies that handle this for us and these are the performing rights organizations. In the US they are ASCAP, BMI, and CSAC. Yes, exactly. Alright, so any kind of venue or company that is going to use songs in any kind of way to in commerce to make money basically or to assist them in uh, making money they need to pay the performing rights organizations a licensing fee so they play they pay one fee each year like a blanket license to use the entire 
song catalog of that performing rights organization. Uh, in the U.S., you know, ASCAP, BMI, CSAC, so restaurants or, or clubs or radio stations or TV broadcasters, movie theaters, they all need to pay ASCAP and BMI and CSAC a licensing fee to use their songs. And then ASCAP, BMI, CSAC are going to uh, distribute those royalties to the publishing companies and songwriters that they represent. All right, and they have some algorithm to determine um, fair payment uh, based on how they see songs, the popularity of songs, etc. cetera. Um, and they can collect all that information digitally nowadays. They're doing that more and more. All right, so that is basically how things work on the songwriter side, on the song side of things. Very similarly, things work on the sound recording side of things. All right, so the recording artist has recorded the song. Um, in many cases, the record company will own the copyright to that song. All right, so if a song, let's let's see, uh, the performing rights, let's talk about performing rights for the sound recording of that song. Every time that sound recording is performed in public, that recording artist and the copyright holder, typically the record company, should generate a performance royalty, just like the songwriters did, all right, and the publishing company. All right, so anytime a sound recording is played in a public venue and on jukebox, um, on the radio, TV, film, etc., a or streaming, for example, or online, uh, or on YouTube in a video, the record company and recording artist should generate a performance royalty for that. All right. So we like we like the songwriters and the publishing companies have the performing rights organizations to issue those licenses and collect the performance royalties. There's also a similar organization on the sound recording side of things, and that organization is Sound Exchange. All right, so Sound Exchange issues performing rights licenses and uh, collects performance royalties on behalf of record companies and recording artists. Now, the deal is that's how it works in most countries, but in the U.S., um, the radio stations and the, the TV broadcast stations. Uh, and, and a lot of people don't pay those performance royalties to the recording artists or the record companies. And that's just the way the laws are right, right now in the U.S. And uh, those, uh, those broadcasters have a lot of money to lobby and keep the laws that way, uh, while the musicians and, and rec record companies are trying to fight uh, so that they can receive those performance royalties. All right, makes sense. Now let's roll back through the types of rights as they apply to sound recordings. A grand right, I suppose, if a Broadway show is going to play a sound recording of a song, they would need to uh, be issued a grand license and pay a, uh, a licensing fee for that. Uh, print right, I don't think there's any way you can print a sound recording, uh, so I don't believe that applies. Sync right definitely applies to sound recordings. So anytime a TV show or movie or video uh, uses a song, a sound recording of a song, they would need to pay a sync right. All right, so in the case of a, a movie production company or television production company or even a business creating a, an ad to run on the internet, they need to negotiate not only a sync, right, a sync licensing fee with the publishing company and the songwriter, but they also need to issue uh, or negotiate a sync licensing fee from the record company and the recording artist of the sound recording. All right? So this is one reason. This, is a, could be, this can totally be a benefit for independent artists because if we have our stuff together and we understand how this works and we own the copyright for the song and the sound recording we can make this really easy for 
uh, music directors who are looking for songs to license because they only have to come to one person or one place uh, to get everything they need to use a song instead of having to uh, go to contact the publishing company and negotiate a licensing fee for the song and then having to go to that artist's um, record company and negotiate with them a fee to use the song they can go and negotiate a one fee for both licenses uh, from an independent artist and oftentimes they like doing this because they enjoy breaking new artists and breaking new music uh, so it's a win-win for us all right so that is basically how things work and as an imp independent artist uh, to be successful we need to understand this and really we have to operate and perform all of these duties on our own all right we can if you're a solo artist you can do this all by yourself if you're a band you can uh, delegate these tasks to the persons in the band who have the most, um, you know, I don't know, skill <laughs> in each in each area. Uh, but the point is, you got to get it done. You got to think about it. And in order to be successful, you need to, uh, you know, take advantage of all these licenses and royalties. That uh, these are the ways that the the big time musicians are making their money, especially when it comes to uh, performance royalties and uh, sync rights, sync licenses. All right, so that is going to wrap it up for this video, and I look forward to talking to you guys more soon.